Hey there, guys, and welcome to your favorite news update show. It is ABC News Highlights. My name is Nana Kwame Bobe. My name is Golda Abadai, and on to our first story. So, Kennedy, Japan's campaign team clarifies showdown comments. So, Nana, over the weekend, there was the NPP Super Delegates Conference. I'm sure everyone in this country heard about it. And Kennedy, Japan, was not happy. He made some showdown statements that was trending all over Twitter, and the MPP, you know, authorities said he should be sent to the disciplinary committee. Mr. Japon, a member of parliament for Asin Central, was captured in a video where he mentioned the term showdown in connection with the president and vice president. This led to concerns and raised eyebrows, prompting the MPP to consider disciplinary action against him. During a press conference, Mr. Japan's campaign manager, Kwame Usu, emphasized that the term showdown was used to convey, convey sorry, a Japan's strong determination to emerge victorious in the November 4 polls. He said it was not indicative of any intended confrontation or hostility towards the vice president or the president. He said, and I'm quoting, whether or not the confrontation was directed towards the vice president or not, are you concerned about the meaning of confrontation? Because I think the showdown is basically a decisive point of either a confrontation or a contest. In that regard, if it is addressed to the vice president, it only then meant that come November, no matter what happens, he is going to be a victor. So he says it is not a threat. It wasn't meant to disrespect them. It's just showing his strong desire to go to polls on November 4th. The reasons check out. Hmm. Do they? I mean, yes, and we won't be the one to decide the disciplinary committee would be. So yes, we'll keep you updated um whatever comes from the MPP's camp. And we are moving on to our next story. So Otum for a to two the second Asan Tekne is set to raise ten million dollars to renovate the home for Anati Teaching Hospital leaking block. So Tum to the second um, has bemoaned the bad structural state of the Confanochi Teaching Hospital, which serves as a referral hospital for 12 regions out of the 16 regions of Ghana. That is how prominent the hospital is. But the blocks A to D have not seen any renovation since they were built somewhere around 70 years back. So after 70 years, throughout the whole period, no renovations, they've not fixed anything that needs to be fixed, is still being in its um, original state. 70 years. 70 years. And how did he find out? Well, he snuck into the hospital at night to visit his father's priest, who is at the hospital because of some illness. Well, he saw the leaking and was totally disheartened by it being the custodian of the land. The Asante Hino Institute has um, decided to organize a fundraising event and is set to raise $10 million to renovate the hospital. You know, Nana, it is all great that, you know, he's seen the situation and he's raising money to fix the situation. Question, do we not have laws in Ghana that, you know, state maybe if you build a property like a hospital at this or that in a year, in six months or two, it has to go and maintenance something, you know, to ensure that everything is going okay. Don't you think we have a terrible maintenance water in this country? Um, what you said in a former would probably be more prevalent in private entities, but there is some level of nonchalance when it comes to the public sector. I mean, yes, there are people that go into the hospital every day. I mean, officials, people that work there, from nurses to doctors to security um, personnel to everybody, to all the people that are employed there and have to go there day to day. They see the leaks, they see the deteriorating of the blocks and do not do anything about it. Well, you can't also say that because you never know what they've done. You don't know who has reported to who and who failed to take it up. You don't know the bureaucratic um, procedure oh, yes. it takes for anybody to do this. So that blame cannot be put on um, the hospital workers. But then I think uh, something that has gotten a lot of um, attention on social media was the fact that how he found out was because he snuck into the place right so people are asking so does that mean you do not go to the same hospital hmm. like question. so how yes how come is missed you for this long and 70 years yes so it does you do not go there and when you do go there it means you are taken to a different place and this brings to light the detachments the disconnect from the ruling classes and civilians i mean 
the services we get, the institutions that serve us, they do not also serve them. So it's easier for them not to know. And then aside that, people are also asking, wow, is it because you are, if it affected somebody close to you, somebody that you love, somebody that you, you, you consider a relative, whether it's blood or not? Is it the only time that you've felt the need to do something about it? Because so everybody else has been going there didn't deserve to prompt a reaction but that is that is the conversations um those are the conversations that are going on in social media that is not what you think yes it is a great initiative yes it is great that he decided to do this but do you think maybe it was too late do you think um the maintenance ethics and culture in this country needs to be looked at let us know in the comment section yes please do so an, an assistant headmaster decided that he could slap a student and as a result, he's caused her partial blindness. So the Ghana Education Services, it has relieved the assistant headmaster of Inquitia Senior High School for alleged assault on a student. While condemning the alleged action, GES in a statement dated August 28, 2023, said it is working with the relevant law enforcement institution to investigate the matter. The attention of management of Ghana Education Service has been drawn to a disturbing picture of a student of Inquitia Presby SHS assaulted by the assistant headmaster of the school. The GES unequivocally condemns the actions of the assistant headmaster, who is supposed to ensure that students and teachers operate in a safe environment. The Eastern Regional Director of Education is liaising with the school authorities and the relevant law enforcement agency to investigate the matter. Meanwhile, the assistant headmaster has been relieved of his duties and the student is receiving medical care and counselling. Now, you know, this is the portion that, that, you know, why he felt the need to do that. It says a video emerged online, emerged online of a young woman believed to be a student of Nkutia Presby Senior High School who was allegedly slapped and beaten by the headmaster. The incident is said to have left the young lady partially blind. According to reports, she was assaulted after her assistant headmaster suspected her of leaving campus without an exit and refused to hear out when she tried to explain that she did have permission. In response, the headmaster is said to have threatened her with more punitive measures leading to what prompted him to physically assault her. He made her kneel down for a period of time, and when she told him that she was unwell, his alleged response was that he would lash her to make her feel better. She mistakenly held the cane when he was about to lash her, and this infuriated him, and he prompted him to land a hefty slap on her face, after which he beat her up. If this were my child, <laughs> what what would have happened? He will go partially blind too. By your own hand? I prompt you because that is crazy and it is ridiculous. It is. I know that you know you, students who you know misbehave don't toe the line need to be disciplined. But I think that we should find better ways of disciplining students. I mean, why does an a, 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 a figure of authority believes that he has a right? slap a student and in turn he's caused her to become partially blind first of all the point of disciplining in schools like these ones especially high school is to instill some you know correct them but yeah, this is not exactly very correct discipline correction you know yes, you are going to go out and live exactly, your life this is not very correctional and it just goes on to shed light on the fact that i personally feel authority especially in these second cycle institutions lack so much grace they do is is so strict and it is bound on it like it just bothers on lines of authority and power and and just a showcase of power and who has more power because everybody that has been to high school probably that also used um the boarding system or went through the boarding system will tell you that sometimes you'd be sick and you'd be denied as yet because you're not believable enough or they think you're going to do something um you do certain things that are not out of the ordinary for anybody that is going through <laughs> adolescence right. and yeah. like puberty and growing you know growing pains you would be punished for things that a psychologist may discuss with you and say this is normal that a child or an, a young adult or a teenager at your age would do certain things just so much little grace and it's just um a showdown of authority and power and it's really really sad you know, not, you would think that a, a big bruise and hair going partially blind would be enough evidence for you to see that he has done what he has been accused of and he needs to go to jail. What investigation? Exactly. Do that is a question that we need answers. He what needs do you mean to go to jail? going to investigate it because it's 
percent of an implication that you're trying to say there's something that could have warranted this nothing she could have done exactly nothing on this earth would have warranted her being beaten abused by somebody that's put in a position to protect, protect her, her exactly. and guide her and and sort of like hover around her with a, a fatherly as a fatherly figure to do this to her and cause her to be partially blind in an eye absolutely um just wrong it's, it's really just wrong but let us know what you think in the comment section guys let us have a conversation on punishment on these levels especially in our second cycle institutions people are saying let's drop the king let's find other ways to do it let us know what you think do you think truly if you spare the rod you spare the child <laughs> and we are moving on to our next story and prophet Odro, who is a founder and leader of the alabaster international ministry has descended on his excellency the president Mab Duncan Kufado for his comments at the just ended um mpp super delegates conference where he said that they should vote for the next MPP leader that will come and take the country out of its current troubles and woes. Mm. And a lot of people were talking. He's not the only one. I mean, his even came a bit later. Twitter immediately set off a blaze as people were discussing what he actually meant by that. Well, according to Prophet Ojo, he likened it to a metaphor that imagine going to a hospital and seeing a doctor and he trusts his doctor so much thinking he would help you mm -hmm. and when push comes to serve he says well i have no pull over this i can't do this let somebody else come to do this well i personally feel that people have misconstrued his intentions and words do you think could you please explain where you think they have most yes and this is and you i mean the public. i know i get it <laughs> <laughs> i get it i personally feel it was in his own merits a way to um motivate and advise um, the delegates to think beyond the now think beyond um, allyship think beyond uh, familiarity and vote for somebody that will impact change in the future because you know that um, sector of electoral process especially delegates across all party sectors mm -hmm. um, these um, elections are eclipsed with um, corruption bribery or you pay the delegates as amount and they'll vote for you so i think in a very basic sense, he wanted to say, look beyond whatever you may have received or may have not received, look beyond who you know, look beyond who you are you are familiar with, and really truly vote for a leader that would do something and change mm -hmm. um, the current state of the nation. But see, I get it. The contest makes it upsetting okay. because, yes, the country is going through a lot. People are suffering. People are um, pulling up the mud. So when somebody they voted to to make it easier for them seems to relegate really our responsibility to an upcoming or incoming leader, it could be very upsetting. It is like you're saying. This is another angle that you are thinking about, and then there's the angle that you know we've heard all over the place. So hopefully he's talking about the angle you're coming from, because if it is the other one, then Ghanaians have every reason well, to be upset. They do, they do. And Prophet Ojo ended. Um, his comments by saying that the, uh, the political leadership of Ghana would not escape the wrath of God. Wow. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, excited. Yeah. And that's how we wrap up today's when ABC News highlights. My name is Nana Kwame Broke. My name is Wuda Abadayi. For more details, please visit ABC News GH, our social media handles, ABC News GH underscore. Yeah, see, see you. you.